Greetings. Welcome to the studio. I'm Harry Fricker. This evening we've got Olga Suchanova who will be talking about her art practice that actually merges arts and scientists and science in a very interesting way. One of the things that caught my eye of Olga's work is one her multidisciplinary approach how she actually engages with a number of media still within photography different film bases different chemistry different cameras different types of technique and a whole range of techniques which nowadays is uh, kind of quite unusual and very very refreshing um, and it was this it was this approach that caught my attention and, and, and I thought worthwhile inviting Olga to talk about her art practice. Before we make a start, a couple of announcements. Just a couple of announcements before we make a start. Um, for the month of March, I'll confirm the dates later, I have a new photography workshop, right? But it'll be photography and astronomy or archaeoastronomy. I'm running the workshop in collaboration with Caroline Kinnett, who is an archaeoastronomer. And uh, it'll be based on Bodmin Moor and we'll be exploring the sacred and ceremonial um, stone circles and stone rows that are actually that were built during the Neolithic. During the Neolithic. So, by all means, um, I'll be telling you more in the in the next couple of weeks, and so you might be interested in attending one of those. Okay, without further ado, I'm delighted to introduce to you Olga Suchanova. Ah, hang on, I've had a glitch here. Just a second. That's better. Olga, greetings. Good to see you. Good evening. Excellent. So, tell us about, about your art practice. That would be absolutely great. So maybe first I introduce myself. I'm from Slovakia and I live and work in London. Uh, I have a studio at the Thameside Studios since 2018. And uh, this is where I am all, also a key holder of the printmaking studio and a screen printing studio. So my practice, it's a very hybrid i would say um, and uh, i prepare some uh, presentation about how you can see my uh, passion about photography and how the passion can become professional or how, how passion can become uh, work where which can pay your bills to be honest so I'm, would you like to start uh, with the presentation, Harry? Yes, of course. Let me go over to the keynote. Okay, here we are. So I'm a visual artist. Uh, uh, if you go next, please, uh, yeah. Harry, I will explain that uh, already from early age I was interested about the image and light. I remember once my father told me that how I was amazed uh, when, uh, because we used to live on eighth floor in the block where we had a sunset and sunrise uh, on one level. So I could see sunrise and sunset from, from my house very easily because we were so high. And I was always amazed uh, looking at the sun rays and the dust uh, floating in the light. And I think there started my passion about the light. And then my father, he had an old camera, Zenit, and always when we went for 
holidays or we had uh, any celebrations he always took pictures on this uh, analog camera so these are these uh, two elements which uh, are going with me all my life to be honest and then i realized uh, when i just started to take pictures that maybe i should study photography and i was deciding if i would like to study photography in slovakia america or england and uh, i really didn't want to study photography in slovakia i'm not i don't know why but i thought that maybe it would be better if i study somewhere where no one knows my uh, work so and new york was too far away and too far from my house so i just decided for england so i moved to england and i didn't start to study straight away photography but uh, i just took up a few jobs and took pictures wherever i could and if you go next please mm -hmm. yeah so i always was connected to nature, I uh, I like the reflections of the trees in the water, or taking pictures of the tree in the winter, and uh, I always look, looked for themes and uh, try to take as best pictures as I could. But if if it's in you, you actually just take pictures. I remember a lot of my friends, they took me that I just take so many pictures, but it's like in you, you just can't stop. And if you go next, please. And then I was interested uh, in different uh, angles and uh, colors. And uh, I look up at some photographers who inspired me. And if you go next, please. And then I started to go to like Chelsea flower shows and started to take a lot of pictures of the flowers because I really like plants and flowers or I really like trees in the winter. And these pictures are were all taken on analog camera. I always, I don't know, I thought that analog camera has something different than digital. The Digi digital camera can capture the same images as analog camera. And then, if you go next, please. I started to be interested in macro. So I purchased the macro lens. I just realized when I was just taking pictures that every lens has different uh, quality. And I really like of macro lenses, this quality that you can see uh, micro, but like a macro. And then the reflections, the water on the leaves, I was always amazed about it then also when i was in london i really like to take pictures of carnivals and graffitis and if you go next i used to go every year to carnival in early morning taking pictures of graffitis because they were there only through the carnival which was for two days and then they were removed so I always went there early morning on Sunday first. I think it's Sunday, Monday and took pictures of graffitis. And if you go next, please. I also like to take pictures of uh, people uh, before and to taking like documentary po photography, uh, document my friends and my family. And uh, I always like this kind of connection, people and and uh, me, and to be me behind the camera, not in the front of the camera. So I was always that person who took pictures everywhere with my family or with the friends. If you go next, please. And then in England, in London, I joined uh, Notting Hill uh, Photo Club and uh, there already started my passion that maybe I should study photography. And when you see this picture on the left top right, it's a we did some uh, comp photography competition in Notting Hill, taking pictures just around. And we won prize for this picture. We won with this picture. Uh -huh. And it was me who took these pictures from this group because there were like few uh, photographers in this competition and we were like the photo club who won the prize 
And then I started to be also interested in different types of camera, like medium format cameras. It was always like, wow, I didn't know that you have 35 mil uh, camera or 120 or large format. And then if you go next, please. I decided to go to college and I wanted to go straight away to university, but uh, it was a little bit difficult. Even I had uh, uh, education in Slovakia. I had to do foundation course again. So I uh, went to uh, City of Westminster College and uh, started to take photography more seriously. And there was first time when I started to use darkroom. And I really like uh, uh, taking pictures, in, uh, developing pictures in the dark room because of the, the magic when you saw how the picture is developing in the front of your eyes. Mm -hmm. So I was so amazed about it and also about the red light in the dark room and everything surrounded it. So I already knew that this is going to be my career. I really want to do something with pictures. And then I started to read a lot of um, books about photography or paintings. And I was really uh, interested in Dutch paintings. And I tried to um, create this kind of Dutch paintings, vanitas, uh, in my photography. So it's uh, these pictures uh, I took uh, at the city of Westminster College. If you go next. Yes, then... can, I, can I just say that the one at the top on the left is beautiful. Um, the scales on that, on that fish and then the objects that are so, so much within the Flemish school of, of, of painting, aren't they? And uh, it has a lovely, lovely atmosphere. Thank you. And then I started to be interested in projects, like more serious projects. And uh, I always liked scars on the bodies and decided to do the project about scars on uh, human bodies, like bodyscapes, which looks like landscape and in the night. So I took uh, black and white pictures of, of the human body with scars. I think this one was my first project, which I really enjoy. And if you go next, then I started to be interested more also about the human rights and freedom and i i wanted to do some interesting project and uh, decided that in london you have a lot of these subcultures and uh, transgenders and i was always amazed how men can look like women for example and i wanted to capture it somehow so I went to the club with one of my assistants when I still studied at the city of Westminster College and we set up the studio in the club and took pictures of these transgenders. And the, these pictures, if you go next, also were taken on analog camera, on color film. And I always, and this one was also the picture who intrigued me to see the photography different because as you, you can see on this picture, there something happened with the light and you have this kind of um, um, leak lights on the on the photograph, but actually these leak lights I really like. So not, I, then I realized that not, not all uh, photographs, they can be perfect. Actually, if, if there is something, some mistake and this mistake can look uh, really nice, so I started to realize that I don't need to take nice pictures so you, you like to look at it, but it can be something somehow like destroyed of something with light and create something uh, else, something interesting. And then if you go next. Can I say that? Um, yes, because it has that distressed look and it's that light filtering in, which actually adds a, a very interesting quality. So it's great. Yeah, exactly. And the color, I always like the color of uh, uh, analog film uh, negatives. 
and at the city of Westminster College, I started to be interested also in large format cameras because there was this, um, you could borrow any kind of camera. And so I borrowed a Cinar 5x4 large format camera at home and started to photograph these deformed uh, vegetables. It was also like, a, I was amazed, like in London, for example, in supermarkets, you, you have this all perfect fruit and vegetables. And I started to do a little bit of research about uh, these uh, unwanted vegetables or fruit. And I read that they even don't read, no, they didn't reach London. It was like in 2011, this project. So it was always that they rather threw away uh, this uh, fruit and vegetables, even they were edible, but because they were um, not the same shape and the same size, they couldn't reach the supermarket. So I used to go to farmer's market and try to find this kind of uh, nice uh, shaped vegetables and took pictures on a large format camera in the studio on uh, transparency film. So that was a really nice project. I really enjoyed this. And then if you go next, I wanted to do something like what is resemble of um, that, how I can recreate the blood vein, but not to use blood vein. So I uh, cross process the plant. I took pictures on five by four camera again and created this kind of feeling of the blood vein uh, as a as a plant uh, plant how would you say that like the plant and then cross process it so it's red the it's changed color yes what you do is you you cross process and you get a, a color shift so that it's it's is red because that's what you want to do yeah exactly and here I started to be interested about how I can reshape photography and the meaning of what I actually want to do. And I don't need to, to use really expensive material, for example. And then if you go next, please, I, after, univer uh, after City of Westminster College, I finally could apply for uh, BA in photography and so I applied at the University of Westminster where it was very theoretical. We had to write lots of essays and we had to read lots of books, but we had uh, also nice studios there and we had studios with microscopes and I really started to be interested taking pictures under the microscope. So I decided to do this kind of project where I uh, was growing mold on uh, vegetables and fruit and I was taking pictures of this mold under the microscope on a 35 mil camera on color film. And then if you go next please, I went because a little bit farther and I really like when you can uh, enlarge something 20 or 30 times smaller so you can see really like the cells and this really intrigued me I really like this kind of uh, photography I think where it, it it started at the University of Westminster that I started to be interested in science and the visual representation of science and uh, then I try to do if you go next I use these uh, images, some of these images uh, under the microscope for, for my self-portraits. For example, on the left, you can see that it's the blood under the microscope. And then I projected it on my body, like it, it floats through me, it's, it's me. And on the, on the right, there is a picture also uh, of a moldy vegetable under the microscope. So I really like to play with these kind of ideas of um, how I can use images uh, from the microscope uh, in some different way. And then 
my uh, if you go next please for my project for my final project uh uh, I did something different, more conceptual, because it was one year, uh, one year before my graduation, my garage with all my artwork and my photographs just burned down and I oh, lost dear. all my artwork. Oh no. Yeah. So it burned everything, but I uh, managed to save some some photographs and paintings so i decided for my uh, final project i would i would re i rephotographed or set all saved the uh, artworks on a five by four also on large format camera in uh, studio lighting and on uh, transparency film because if you shoot it i don't know if you shot uh, on a large format camera, but it has a transparency film, Fuji, Fuji, Velvia, Fuji, Velvia. Yeah. It has these beautiful uh, tones of colors, and I oh. really like this quality of uh, colors uh, from this film. Yes, Why absolutely. I, to use. Mm. I used to shoot in color negative, Fuji color, and uh, I also shot in color slide, and color slide just has such a rendition of tones, um, such a special rendition of tones. It actually contracts the tonal range, uh, which actually makes everything rather punchy and, and rather different. So yeah, exactly. And then if you go next, this is where I started. I decided that. Uh, I didn't have enough studying uh, of photography, but I would like to start to study something uh, involved with photography, but a little bit different. And uh, there was this course at Central Ma San Martins, Masters in Art and Science. And I really like the idea of this course and I just uh, applied and just tried if they take me and they took me. And here I started to be more interested in uh, phenomenon of light of photography and started ah. to take more pictures on pinhole camera. Right. I couldn't understand like how you can take pictures without lens, like how it is. And then you realize that it's actually light. It's uh, uh, the rules of the light, how light uh, travels through the pinhole and uh, objects uh, uh, or project uh, the image from outside, inside, upside down, and then you realize that your eyes works exactly the same, and your brain just turns the image upside down, so you can see uh, how you see. And I think this one was uh, for me um, really interesting, a and I realized that I actually don't need to take pictures on analog camera, I can just take pictures on anything, I can ma make my own cameras. So I started to experiment with pinhole cameras, and if you go next... Excellent, which can I also add, which actually takes us back to the principle of the camera obscura, which is pre-photographic. Yes, exactly. Renaissance. I was very interested in this uh, photography. And uh, if you go next, yeah, I this is, for example, taken on panorama uh, pinhole camera made from the paper uh, with the uh, actually negative uh, film in black and white. And you go, if you go next, as you said, that I was really interested in camera obscuras and I started to build camera obscura. Uh -huh. And I had an opportunity to build one camera obscura at Tate, modern. And as you can see, I uh, it was a big box. Uh, and uh, in, the, in the back, it's the shard. So, and the window, so I just uh, move, uh, place the ca uh, camera obscura that way that it could uh, reach the shard and you could see this uh, beautiful outside world inside, uh, uh, inside Tate Modern. I wanted 
because it was in 2016 oh no it was um Ah, oh, yeah, it was in 2017 and it was one year after they reopened uh, Blavatnik House and I wanted to uh, project the uh, old Tate modern, uh, actually that hydraulic uh, power station inside the new building, but I couldn't uh, face my camera obscura that way. So I had to uh, face camera obscura towards to the shard. But I think it, it looks beautiful if you look that there was any lens, just a big, huge black box. I could get, I could fit five people inside and they could just sit down and enjoy seeing the image on, on the screen, which is in color without any lens, any technology. Wow. And if you go next, then I started to propose uh, this idea for art residency. And uh, I went to Italy with Lumen to Athena and I created one camera obscura there. And this is the view from camera obscura. It was in beautiful uh, nature around also. And then if you go next. Whereabouts please. is um, Athena, Olga? Athena, uh, the uh, Lumen, is uh, the uh, stu Lumen Studios, it's collective uh, who organize uh, uh, or interested in astronomy. And they usually organized um, art residencies in Athena, where we used to go to see some observatories and we had studios over there also. And it was usually like around 15, 20 artists met and created some artwork and at the end of the residency which was like for two weeks we had a show in the church in Athena for whole weekend where the locals the community could see our artworks what we created over there excellent Thank it's always you. good uh, experience to, to to do art residency and then next I went to Spain and I created camera obscura uh, from the room in Spain. It's uh, at Koya Air, where, which is uh, near uh, Valencia, but the first village is like 40 kilometers from this uh, place. And uh, yeah, there are also beautiful night skies and I took really nice pictures of the night skies over there because uh, there is a, a really low light pollution actually no light pollution over there uh -huh. and and if you go next and then also very revolutionary for my art practice was that i went to cern with uh, my course and uh, i started to be more intrigued about visual representation of data and also about the philosophical questions like i i usually I did ask the questions like, where do we come from and who are we, where we are going, but we actually don't know. And mm -hmm. I started to little bit investigate about these questions or where am I going? Why I am here? So if you go next, please. And there is this image of Large Hadron Collider. It's actually the photograph from Michael Hoch. Uh, who is the physicist and artist at CERN and there uh, was this huge poster over it and I just took picture of that poster and I asked him if I can uh, use this picture for my artwork and he allowed me so I started to experiment with this picture because I just found it so fascinating how how data can be translated visually into something so beautiful so first I created a, a 3D anaglyph. I started to play a little bit differently now. I went a little bit, um, I left photography, uh, analog photography, and started to experiment more with digital photography and how I could actually take this picture from someone else and to create something else. So, and then I was really interested in 3D and virtual reality and uh, 
uh, artificial intelligence and I just thought that maybe I could create something different and I created the 3D anaglyph. I always like that when you put the 3D glasses and you look at something, you actually can see it 3D, like it's not 2D image, but 3D image. Mm -hmm. And it's just a play with light and colors. So I created this kind of 3D anaglyph and it was exhibited at Tate also. It was really good experience. Cool. And then if you go next, please. Uh, I started to play with cyanotypes also. I realized that I can create my own chemicals. I just mix some chemi chemicals and I can create some photographic emulsion. And I don't need to buy photographic papers, but I can make my own papers. So I started to play with uh, cyanotypes. I uh, went through, through a few workshops and learned more. And then you learn that you can take a cyanotypes on anything, whatever you want. If you mix it with gelatin, you can uh, take a picture on the glass. So, and if you go next, please. And then also at the university, we had a printmaking studio. And I always like this kind of um, connection that you take picture and then you actually uh, retake this picture, but you, you transfer this picture on uh, uh, some mat different material, for example, on zinc, and then you apply colors or black ink, and you can create this beautiful black and white picture using ink. And this was something for me, like, I felt that I want to do something like this. Like, I want to play with uh, paint and uh, colors. So I start and, and I wanted to do different techniques. I wanted to learn gum oil uh, process at university, but I couldn't because it was apparently too dangerous. So I started to play with gum oil prints when I left university and I started to do more experimental photography after. And then on the right, if you see, I tried to do 3D uh, photo lithograph using two colors so when you put the 3d glasses on you can see this print it's actually fine art uh, print you can see it 3d so i started to apply different techniques to the print making or i make i made my own glow in the dark ink and made moons which glow in the dark for example i just wanted to know wanted to create this feeling when you can see an image or in a day but in the night also so it would glow so i played with uh, this kind of ideas and techniques and if you go next please then i just realized that even the image etched on the zinc looks quite amazing and it's already artwork by itself so i just framed it or well weld, weld it into frame like this and i had an exhibition of just the plate of large hadron collider with the cyanotype of uh, nataraja which is actually i photographed this at cern it's the gift from india uh, and it's uh, placed inside the CERN, this uh, kind of Hindu sculpture, which I found quite uh, fascinating. And if you go next, please. Here I started to be more interested about the um, recycled paper. And for example, uh, Nataraja on the left was printed on banana leaf paper. Uh, on the right, I created my own paper from the paper from the post and started to make my own paper on which I could print the prints. So I found it quite interesting also that how you can create your own images and you can uh, make your paper, you can make your own frames, so you judge all your, your work. You are the artist, the creator. So I wanted to create 
everything on my own because I felt that this is how artists should work. Mm, absolutely, and, and it's it's a, it's quite a liberating experience because all of a sudden you are in the driving seat. Yeah, and if you go next, please. Then I started to be more interested about the moon and uh, representation of the moon and uh, went to few uh, observatories of the moon through telescopes in London. And I was just amazed, like, how you can take a picture through telescope with your iPhone and uh, have this amazing picture of the moon. And then I actually also realized that I, uh, I can take images from NASA or any or ESA and I can print my own digitals and I can make my own moons uh, as a as a print. So I started to download images from NASA's and I create my own digital negatives and then I etch these uh, uh, negatives on the zinc plate or copper plate and create a fine art prints. Cool. And if you go next, please. And then I started to play with the glow in the dark, as I said. So you can see on the left side, this is image, but it's more abstract image of uh, the moon glowing in the dark. And then I try to use different lights and mood about the prints, uh, about the moon. So I scratch the plates or I reuse them all the time and uh, or I always play in the in the in the studios and trying different uh, techniques and then I go if you go next please at the university I started to play with the idea about um, how you actually can take pictures only with photographic paper how you can just place something on the paper and leave it there and the picture it takes uh, by itself so you don't need to do anything else so i started to put these flowers on the photographic paper and i left them there like for two weeks three weeks uh, what what will happen so i experimented this way and I really like the results. It looks amazing. Mm -hmm. I think how just light can take pictures of some object on photographic paper without taking the pictures with the lens or with the camera. And if you go next. So is that the flower just yes. sitting on a piece of photographic paper and letting the light filter through areas that are more translucent or less translucent of the petals of the flower and so on and imprint its own the light that is imprint its own image yes cool thank you and then and then i started to play also with the idea like cross-processing but digital cross-processing so i i like started to like Photoshop and playing with uh, this software, like how I can take pictures with the nature or how nature can take pictures by itself, but then how I can manipulate the picture, wh where I can go with this picture, because uh, the, the picture on this kind of uh, papers, photographic papers, if you don't fix it properly, it will still develop by itself. So sometimes I just document pictures from time to time because they always look different. So yes. I always play with the images. And if you go next, please. Then I started to uh, do some chemicrams also like you just position something on the paper and use chemicals and light and uh, where it can take you this kind of experimentation and i always was intrigued about the moons and suns so i again i downloaded the picture of the sun from nasa and started to play with the idea of the sun with nasa or how to create the universe without actually taking pictures of the universe and if you go next 
it says like with chemical crumbs, you can create your own universes, your virtual re- uh, universes. Indeed. And yeah. And if you go next, it's fabulous. I, I, start, I always like this idea of uh, circles, and uh, and this is like I left uh, maybe just paint box on the paper for two months, and it it created this kind of texture, but the blackness in the middle, and it looks like black hole or another another world behind. Mm-hmm. like a world within the world. So mm-hmm. I liked playing with these ideas about uh, like how we look at the universe, how we can recreate our own universe and how we understand it. So, yeah, so I went back a little bit uh, to uh, experiment. I experimented more at uh, university where, uh, with art and science than uh, at the University of Westminster in photography department. There, I think I gained more, um, I have to say that, more structure. So I knew what I can use, what kind of cameras, what photographers. I learned all theory at the University of Westminster on bachelor. And at my MA, I actually shaped myself and started to do more experimental photography after all this theory I learned. And I was always intrigued with the daguerreotypes and all like how photography started or who uh, created first developer because photography is here for such a long time, pinhole photography, but Mm. they just couldn't fix the image on the paper. That's right. And then I realized that I actually can take pictures of something on uh, with the just plant developer. And if you go next, because it has a lot of uh, um, this kind of material which can uh, create the image. So I started to play with the plants. Uh, plants, they have a lot of chlorophyll, so it, 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 it is photographic and uh, they take up the photosynthesis. So it's usually if you have some object on uh, the photographic paper made from the plants or from vegetable juice, it's actually fades where is not object and where is the object, it stays, uh, the color stays the same. So I started to play with these ideas like, oh, that's amazing. You can actually take pictures without chemicals and you can use nature again. So I I experimented a lot uh, at school, but then I uh, decided that I was really interested about the picture, where the picture is now, like how we can see how we can create our own images in virtual reality and mm-hmm. if virtual reality or free dimension can recreate our sense of reality so i uh, if you go next i started to play with this idea and i started to play with I, the idea of virtual reality like i really want to create my own universe or my own sun in virtual reality Excellent. so i created i started to learn uh 3d softwares like unity and uh, unreal engine and then i started to learn uh, software agisoft which i could create photogrammetry 3d uh, images of objects and then position them into virtual reality so I really started to be interested in this kind of photography. But then I realized that the graphics are still not there and the softwares are updating so or renewing so quickly that I really don't want to spend too much time on this project. And if you go next, I created some projects in virtual reality. For example, here you can see you had like bubbles 
in the space and each bubble was uh, someone else world so you could get in into the world of someone or i created the sun in virtual reality where you could get inside the sun and you could hear the sound of the sun that was a really interesting pro project or if you go next please i collaborated with kelly's frank lemont and we uh did a we created a project for tate how you can become uh, the artwork in the gallery so we took uh, 3d images of people at state and they could then with the technology with 3d technology they could position themselves around the gallery and take pictures of themselves as a, as a sculpture so it was a really interesting project mm -hmm. and also if you go next please so and then at the university, I started to be really interested about the sun trials, about pinhole camera, how actually you can leave camera with a photographic paper outside for three months and this camera can still take picture. It's fascinated me. So I started, I created on in, on, in open, open studios I made around 30 pinhole cameras and I gave it to people with my address and telephone number and I told them that call me or send it to this address uh, for me when, after three months. So I then I met these people, they sent me the cameras and uh, I cre started to create this kind of project and I called it like chasing the sun. So I have, uh, I usually give cameras or I leave cameras around surroundings to take pictures uh, of the landscape and the sun. If you go next. Yes, I, I totally please. agree. And I, I totally agree in what you said. I think these photographs have a quality that, that, that is something else. They kind of almost as if they were, they escaped an explanation. They're kind of familiar recognizable but then there is the arcs in the sky and that is what what almost is 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 so puzzling about it maybe you could tell us a little bit about those arcs in the sky so each arc on the sky it's actually one day of the sun on the sky and uh, if it's really strong white line it means that it's it was really nice hot sunny day or sunny day but if you have like just some like um, disturbed lines it means that it was cloudy and sometimes there is no even light a line over there like nice arc it means that it was raining or very cloudy and no sun on the sky and if you can see for example that the, for example this might be from maybe have done over the winter because the sun is really low over the sky mm -hmm. but if you if you go for example next picture maybe it might see better this is still a little bit lower these are in london taken mm -hmm. pictures for example this picture is taken inside of the patio so you can see the re there are three big windows. So the reflections on the left and right is actually a reflection of, of the sun in the window and creates this kind of uh, nice image. So, but if you go next, you can see that if it's a really sunny and the sun is really high, you can create a really beautiful arches. Then I realized that maybe I could this kind of photography it's it's i would say like in astronomy photography could be something so i send it to uh for the competition for uh the uh, astronomy photography of the year and they shortlisted me which i was really surprised but mm -hmm. i was quite happy that like uh how in uh, uh this kind of competition i don't know if you've been there but there are so many like really high technology cameras and telescopes can be shortlisted something uh, what is homemade with no lens 
and with photographic paper. It was a little bit very controversial for, for me to have this kind of uh, photography at this kind of um, exhibition or, or be shortlisted in this competition, but it, I felt really honored about it. Quite right, so. And so. in a way, it, it bucks the trend. So much astrophotography, because I do a bit of astrophotography and in my workshops as well, and so much of it is about the kit, a kind of, from my perspective, a sort of obsession with, you know, the camera, the lens, and, 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 and the cost. And, and somehow I wonder, in a way, yours, your photograph, your solograph, goes, bucks the trend, it goes against all that. It's almost the, dare I say, the anti-photography almost, because it actually strips it down to the absolute basic here. For the sens light sensitive material and a beam of light. End of. Nothing else. Because yes. there's, no, there's no processing in these solographs of yours, is that correct? Yes, there is no process, no. So how do you, so what do you, what we're actually looking at is fogging on the photographic paper. Yeah, it's like laser. If you imagine how laser gets through the pinhole and uh, uh, it, it, it etches the, the lines inside the paper, how the sun um, lights through the pinhole. So it's like engraving, it, it engraves the picture into the light sensitive paper, mm -hmm. uh, photographic paper. Do you fix the paper afterwards? No, no, I don't fix paper. I just scan the picture. Why it's in the, the photographic paper is black and white, but I scan it in color. Why you can see colors. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you. So, cool. I love it. And if you go next, please. So I collaborate, uh, collaborated with artist Terry Chat at the uh, art residency in Spain, and we created uh, uh, the sculpture. We called it the uh, Enlightenment, and it was made only from uh, the material what which we found there, like hay, clay, and water, and. Uh, also with the bottles in colors and i positioned 12 pinhole cameras six from outside and six from inside i left it to expose for six months so and then i took uh, images if you go next i started to really like uh, images now i was interested how could image look at uh, the photograph after certain time, more than one year. So for example, the picture on the left, so was exposed for two years and the picture on the right was exposed for two years also. Wow. So now I really want to create this kind of uh, timelines, how long you actually can live. Uh, cameras out to create images but I think that for a long time because there was uh, the longest exposure for solar graphic was eight years so I think in eight years you, and the image was really good quality to be honest for solar graphic so it's possible to create uh, uh, to make eight years exposure in amazing photography. amazing and I think this is what it will again bucks the trend we're not looking at, you know, normal astrophotography is a few seconds, you know, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 seconds, depending on your lens, blah, 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 the focal length. Um, here it kind of breaks all the rules, all the rules of photography, time as well, especially with time, community. photography is very much about time and apertures. And in a way, it goes back to, to the very, very basic principles of image making. Exactly. Yeah, and then 
I started to make fine art print, prints in the printmaking studio and created some photo etchings. Photo etching is uh, like I, from my solar graph, I created a digital negative. And then on the zinc plate, I applied the photographic emulsion and I exposed under the UV light then this digital negative on the zinc plate. And then I used some uh, acids to etch the plate. And then I applied um, uh, black ink on the plate and created this kind of uh, solar graph. So it's a photo etching. I always looked like how I can create something else with a photograph with photographs. So mm -hmm. it doesn't need to be a photograph only, but it can be print or something else. And then if you go next, please, this is also solar graph, but I started to play with light, uh, with the color. So I have, why um, fine art print can be only black and white. It can be in color. And I really wanted to create this, the, sun trials of the sun like maybe under the like when it's a sunset with the yellow and orange mm -hmm. behind the church so i played with the, this kind of ideas so i started to do this solar graphic pro project uh, at university and i work on it uh until now it's ongoing project and if you go next i also collaborated um, with the lumen studios and curated an exhibition solar graphy at Bethnal Green in Lumen Studios Gallery, Crypt Gallery. Mm -hmm. And for this exhibition, I also created some artwork, which are photo etchings, a frame inside the cameras where these images were exposed. So, yeah. And then if you go next, I just want to show you, show you that not all solar graphs not all images can be solar graphs but actually can create nice chemigrams why i like the ke uh, chemigrams for this reason but you e i even don't need to apply any uh, anything on the paper because the water from the rain in reaction with, with photographic paper for such a long time creates its own artwork so I really like this abstract way of solar graphy, that it's solar graphy, but it looks very abstract. Mm -hmm. And if you go next, they are all like fails, I would call, or I call it the wonders of solar graphy, because uh, it's something beauty about it. I really mm -hmm. like the quality of the image. And you still can see in the red, there are some sun trials on the paper, but very, very small rather faint and yes on, now that you yeah. point them out i can see them it's the it's the yellow kind of or yellowish yeah, exactly. sort of vertical ish um sorry horizontal lines yes and the uh -huh. next one is also uh the wonders of solar craft so this is sometimes when it's full of water it creates its own uh artwork that's beautiful and then uh, after I collaborated uh, with, uh, if you go next, I uh, start, I always was interested about this 3D imaging and how I can create 3D art print, but as a, as a etching. And then I uh, was commissioned with other artists to create a, a photo etching, lenticular photo etching of uh, datas. And it was created for uh, the research center at King's Cross and from one side you could see different data of uh, cancer cell and from other uh, side you could see different data of cancer cells which are, were taken in this uh, new NMR facility center uh, in uh, London Bridge mm -hmm. and if you go next please there is uh, the the principal of the King's College is relieving uh, the artwork with the collaborator Conte Sassi. And then started pandemic. <laughs> if you mm. go next, please. Through pandemic, uh, I uh, went, um, I wanted to do some art residency, but it was uh, only, I really liked the idea about watching the sun art residency 
art science virtual residency with Mayes Creative. So I applied and they uh, accepted me. And I started to play with the idea of um, the colors of the sun, like um, uh, what color is actually sun. And then you realize that the we, we can't, it's the sun is white because we can see sun only in the our visible spectrum, which is uh, actually white. And then in white color, you have all these colors. So I took the picture from NASA and started to play and created photopolymer plate. Photopolymer plate is a more eco-friendly plate in printmaking where you don't use chemicals or acids, but you just develop the picture uh, on the plate in, in the water, just plain water. And then I started to play with the ideas like how I can create my own colors. If the sun is on, it, it do, actually doesn't have a color of it. Our brain creates the color also. So I decided I will make my own color and create my own suns uh, in different colors. Mm -hmm. And then I created my own uh, glow in the dark paint and mixed some with the, the colors. So if you see a few suns in the dark, they, they glows. But the problem with the glow in the dark ink is that it, it fades quite quickly. So it doesn't stay that the technology is still not there yet, how I can create better uh, picture or glow in the dark ink which stays for, for quite a long time active to be ah. honest yeah and uh, then i re uh, i did this project with mayas creative and i really enjoyed it and uh, i sent picture to the astronomy photography of the year competition again and they they shortlisted they shortlisted me again so Fabulous. i have so, so this picture is uh, at the national maritime museum at the moment uh and it will be exhibited there until august 2022 and it was in the category category like invention of image category because again it's not a take it's the image was taken by nasa I just reimagine uh, the image and it's a printmaking. It's even no photography again. So it was shortlisted in the category, which it's actually no photography, to be honest, but it is photography. So maybe how I think it's, I would call it that it's like post uh, a photography image, like where maybe what I can see that where the photography goes, like how photography develops, because everyone can take pictures now. Everyone is a photographer. So now it's up to you what you can do with photography, what you can do with images, how you can treat them. So this is the idea mm, of uh, redoing. Yes, interesting, the idea of, on the one hand, being inspired by a particular body of work and uh, I'm going to use the word appropriating or helping oneself or reusing, recontextualizing. And it's interesting then to, men to actually say that maybe this is a post photographic process because I guess that NASA imagery would have actually been new. They would have been used scientific lenses and processes and blah, blah, blah. Yet somehow as it's redefined, recontextualized into something else, it becomes something else that in a way, yes, I would totally agree with you. It is post photographic. Interesting. Yeah. And if you go next, I did another uh, art, art science residency with uh, Mayes Creative and uh, I uh, wanted to capture London, how it would look 
if there is less light pollution and uh, how it, it would look if we could see stars or galaxies uh, in London. Mm. So I, on my journeys from my home to my studios, I usually I, I cycle and I take pictures on my journeys on 35 mil camera. And it was already at the previous residency with Mayes Creative, I started to experiment with plant developers and caffeinol developer. So I started to create my own uh, plant-based developers and uh, developing these photo images uh, uh, in my studio and then scanning these images and using Photoshop and using images from Hubble telescope and combining them together and creating this kind of illusion how it would be if there is no light pollution in London and you can see this beautiful star, uh, starry sky above you. Out so of I this world. Play with this, this idea. And then if you go next, I'm also fascinated about the River Thames and I was commissioned by Mural uh, to create some uh, visual immersive story. So I created an immersive uh, visual story about the River Thames where I recorded the River Thames. I used the poem from Rudyard Kipling, The River's Tale and also, I shot all images on 35 mil uh, camera with uh, uh, Ilford or Fumapan or any black and white film. And I developed it in the homemade developer made from the River Thames water and cool. from the plants grown around the river. So, and if you go next, and these are these kind of images which I created and then it is uh, online uh, a, through mural and coil uh, commission. So if you want to look at this uh, project, you need to have a, a cryptocurrency wallet. So you actually, when you click on my project, it will support me by via cryptocurrency. This oh. was the idea how you use the a cryptocurrency for uh, your projects. Oh, cool. So what is it? Are they are those images NFTs then? You can't buy them. You can just look at them. They are not for sale. They are just to watch. So, so if you click on them, it will take out the money from your crypto wallet. Like if you pay, uh, pay for some advert or something like that in uh, uh, on social media, for example. So it's like that, that. It's like advert. So if you click on it, it will take money from your cryptocurrency wallet. Oh, cool. So it was like how, how you support artists and their projects. So it was a nice uh, commission and project and it's still going on and it's virtual and it's online so it's good to try new things in photography and how photography is presented nowadays because through pandemic everything became so digital and virtual everyone is on computer it's more virtual and less physical so it's good to explore different uh, um, different medias and uh, how you can work with medias, how you can adapt this medium to your art practice mm -hmm. and when you, what you can achieve. So don't, I don't take seriously myself because like art and science, as a scientist, you write down everything, you explore and then you move on somewhere else. So I always do few projects. There is no like I'm I'm doing only one project, but there are always few projects which I do. Excellent. And, uh, maybe some some projects are laying in my mind and uh, developing by itself. And then I come back to this project and to uh, again, because 
I think that if you struggle with some project and you can move on, I usually just leave it for a few months and then I come back to that project and it's like I can do it better. It's like it, it developed by itself. Yes. Something strange. Yeah, sometimes you need a bit of distance. Sometimes you can be too involved, too close and you kind of, you begin to lose um, lose sight of, you know, the forest and the tr and the trees so yeah i agree with you excellent so just two questions what well, thank you so much for this presentation it's been absolutely fantastic in terms of actually seeing the trajectory of your or, 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 of your photographic career this far and it's been so informative and actually quite inspirational in terms of your attitude and progression and how once you, you, you manage to hone into where your passion, who your passions are, it's interesting how then you, you can definitely see how they've deepened. So this has been an excellent, excellent presentation. So here are my two questions. One, what's next? Yeah, next, uh, I'm at the moment I'm doing two projects, not few projects, but two commissions, which I have deadlines for. So it's a video and uh, digital manipulation. So I'm somewhere else again. But uh, I still do solar graphy projects and I have uh, lots of pinhole cameras around London exposing. <sighs> so this is uh, this is for me ongoing uh, project where which I really developing into something bigger and uh, I bought hydrophones it's uh, how you can detect the sound uh, from the water because I really would like to create kind of uh, the the sound of the river Thames in a really good quality so you mm -hmm. really can I I would like to push forward this project about the Thames and as I did with the VR, uh, Virtual Reality Sun, I want to create this whole immersive uh, immersive um, experience of the river so you can see it, you can uh, hear it, but in a very different way, like in my way, like how I can see it. So I will I think this is what I would like to do. Well, that Next. sounds absolutely fascinating because the River Thames, ancient as it is, uh, I know that uh, Bronze Age and Iron Age peoples would actually throw gifts to the river. De religion had changed, blah, blah, blah. They, they believed in water deities and so on and so forth. And uh, there's many finds in the River Thames that, 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 that have been left as offerings and gifts that date back well over 2,000 years. So, you know, it's, I think the River Thames is, uh, for, any, for any Londoner, you know, it's in their blood. It's very, very interesting. So, yeah, tapping into that kind of ancient thing primeval almost is very very interesting definitely I can definitely connect with that and i can definitely i'd love to see that work and listen to the sounds definitely my next question olga would you give us for your next presentation live stream here which is next sunday at 8 p.m you're going to give a workshop live stream could you give us a literally just a whistle stop to what are we going to get? So you you will create your own pinhole camera and then you can expose it for some time and then I will uh, demonstrate how you can uh, develop the picture. So I will take you from making camera, exposing and developing the picture so you can create your own solar graph and then maybe you can be shortlisted for astronomy photographer of the year too excellent 
well folks remember remember to get your free tickets for the next live stream because i think that it's going to be an unmissable experience and on that note olga is there anything else you'd like to add well, thank you for inviting me it was a really nice experience talking about my artwork good i'm glad it's been it's been an absolute pleasure thank you thank you so much for being here olga and thank you everyone for being here as well and on that note i'll say bye bye olga and we'll be bye -bye. in touch take care you have a great one take care. bye for now well that was amazing um a whistle stop tour of uh the artist's trajectory, an emerging artist's trajectory. And I think this is what's been the absolute eye-opener for me. And what really is um, fantastic is the discipline and the thoroughness with which Olga covers her, her practice, which is absolutely great. So, without further ado, folks... Thank you so much for attending, for participating in this live stream. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, you can always view the recording. Um, we'll go live onto my YouTube channel as soon as, uh, as this recording is finished. And uh, you have a great weekend and a great week ahead. Bye for now.